Hey there networking pros. In this video, we're going to talk about using fiber optic components to extend your local area network into another building or in a sense creating campus wide network. Now, in the last video, we talked about the fiber optic components. And if you didn't see that video, I'll leave a link here for you so you can go see that one first and then come back to this one. In this video, we're going to do real world application. So you'll remember I talked about transceivers and fiber optic cable. So in building A, we've got a switch, and this yellow wire right here represents the, the internet service that comes from the outside world. So everyone in building A has got access to not only each other's network resources, but they've also got access to the internet. Over in building B, we have nothing. All right, so what we could do is get a couple of matched transceivers. So I'll go on one of the popular auction websites, and if you want to buy brand new, that's fine too. I'm a little bit of a believer of using the auction website first just because of the enormous cost savings. So I got a couple of matched SC multi-mode transceivers. And then I also got a 400 foot, let's pretend it's 400 feet. I got a 400 foot multi-mode fiber cable. And then I connect the two buildings with the multi-mode fiber optic cable. So as I'm connecting the two transceivers, right? Then the transceivers also have an ethernet port on them. So if you don't remember that from the last video, I didn't really spend a lot of time talking about it, but see it's got an ethernet port on it, a copper ethernet port. I'm going to patch that in to the switch. Now some switches will come with, or you can get switches that come with the transceiver already built into the, uh, into the switch. So the fiber transceiver is already built in. But if you don't have that, you can just get the transceivers patch them in. I'm going to add a switch to building B where there wasn't one before. Connect the transceiver this way. Voila, I am now sharing network resources plus don't forget the internet with all the people in building A and all the people in building B. So if only it were that simple. The elephant in the room here is how do I get this fiber optic cable from building A to building B? a couple ways you can do it. In fact, there may be more than two, but it's either to go underground, in other words, exit the building, dig a trench, lay conduit, and then come back out and go into the side of the building. That's one way to do it. The other way you can do it is with an aerial cable. An aerial cable usually involves putting some kind of a reinforcing line in first. You can't just simply run the cable through the air. I mean, you could, but it probably wouldn't last very long because what happens is there's going to be a lot of tension here. The fiber optic cable itself is not designed to endure that tension. So you need to either buy a cable that's got what's known as a messenger wire already built in it. And the messenger wire is like a steel braided cable that takes the stress. Um, or the other thing you can do, and this is what I've done when I've done the installations, and I'm not an expert, but I've done a couple of these, is I got steel braided cable um, and I ran it from here, to, from building A to building B. And then I put one of those uh, flex conduits, they're kind of those three quarter inch or one inch um, plastic flex pipe conduits. I, strat I secured that to the, uh, the braided cable and then I pulled the fiber optic cable through that. And there's a few things you need to know if you're gonna buy fiber optic cable. Usually I recommend buying it pre-made. What I mean by pre-made is mean that the, the ends are already terminated. It is possible to do terminations yourself you can buy the kit the kit is anywhere from a hundred to several hundred dollars to take the raw cable and put the ends on it but in my situation what I've done is I bought the cable pre-made and you can get cables pre-made to length and I'm going to show you in a, in a minute on the end of the video some different resources some pictures and things I want you guys to know about so that you can make uh, make wise decisions about purchasing the cable so those are things to consider it's easy to do the transceivers it's easy to buy the cable it's the tricky part is getting it from building A to building B. Now let's switch over and talk about some of the other things you need to consider.